Hello everybody, it's your Peacekeeper, and welcome back to the Gaming Lounge. And in this video, we're going to talk about the importance of vision control. Vision control is one of those concepts that I've talked about before in the past, but uh, I feel like it's important to cover it again. It's no surprise that you cannot engage a ship that you cannot see. It's no surprise you can't counter moves made in stealth. It's also no surprise that destroyers and carriers control vision. So why then am I surprised to find that vision control still remains one of the most common problems among World of Warships players? I've talked before in the past about vision control and how it impacts the game from the standpoint of every class in the game. Stealth has always been a benefit to putting yourself in the right position to engage enemy ships when you are at the biggest advantage and they are at the biggest disadvantage. It's also critical to controlling the map and reorganizing towards threats early in a fight. But what the heck is vision control? Vision control is a concept of seeing enemy ships and not being seen yourself except for when you want to. Destroyers and carriers are the two primary classes that control vision in the game. That's also not a surprise. It also happens to be that one of the most important classes, destroyers, happens to be the single most important map control ship in the game. For this reason, killing enemy destroyers is crucial to victory in World of Warships. Failure to control the enemy destroyers makes winning significantly more difficult. Why? The bulk of DPS in a match is performed by cruisers, not destroyers. They have one of the highest damage potentials of any class in the game with that high rate of fire and pretty average damage. They also happen to be destroyer killers, but a well-played cruiser will massacre a battleship just as easily if it can do so without being engaged themselves. In the replay that we're watching, the enemy Ibuki, uh, his player name is I Am Russ, absolutely abuses this mechanic to his advantage, and he is a constant annoying threat as a result. He also conveniently supports his destroyers. Pay attention to this, and we'll see how this shakes out there at the end of the match. Speaking of enemy destroyers, pay special attention to the tactics they employ throughout this match. See anything interesting? Take mental note of their tactics and how they operate, and we will compare that to my own team's destroyers and how they operate towards the end of the video. We will talk about this at length. So, how do I, as insert whatever class you want here, utilize vision control to my advantage. The first thing to do is to realize how important your strengths are and how they play with regards to where the match is at in terms of its time length. We all know that battleships are tanks, and its value as a tank, though, is highly dependent on the timing in the match. When is it most important? In my, my opinion... The ability of a battleship to tank damage is most important in the early to mid game. As you get towards the end of the game, battleships become less and less potent. Uh, you got to take that damage. You got to be visible. You've got to put yourself out there. You've got to also take advantage of enemy broadsides. As the game wears on, it's easier and easier for a battleship to remain, quote, in stealth and for stealth build battleships to actually work effectively. And so as a result, Battleships, as the game goes on, uh, I don't think that they retain their value in terms of vision control. So what their primary purpose is, is for tanking damage. What about a cruiser? A cruiser is a strong mid-game ship with important roles in the early game, mostly DPS, and in the late game. Vision control due to better than battleship concealment, as well as the use of consumables to detect ships that you generally wouldn't be able to see otherwise. It's important for cruisers to know their consumables and to maximize the number available in the late game, especially in matches where destroyers survive to the end and you have a ra and you are a radar or hydro cruiser. This obviously means they need to pay attention to your health and avoid taking unnecessary damage. Speaking of unnecessary damage, oh, this poor hipper. Anywho... The biggest thing with the... <laughs> God, that was a monster hit. Uh, the biggest thing with regards to, you know, being a cruiser and not taking that damage early on is about minimizing your exposure to enemy ships, specifically battleships. You definitely don't want to be uh, visible early in the game. That's how that hipper just got absolutely shrecked. Uh, he was visible, he was broadside, and all those things together definitely did not help. Speaking of cruisers and nuisances, there's I Am Russ and his Ibuki. They're off on the right side of the screen. 
Uh, just pay attention to what he does throughout this match, and you'll see what I'm talking about more about how he plays his cruiser. Now, Ibuki is a particularly difficult cruiser to play because of the massive Citadel. It, it literally cannot tank any damage whatsoever. And so its play style is going to be contingent entirely upon uh, avoidance of damage. And he does an excellent job throughout this battle of just f flat not existing. He just does not exist as far as anybody can engage him. That leaves us with destroyers. Oh, geez. Where do we begin with destroyers? Destroyers are monsters in the late game, especially if the only thing that remains are battleships and the heavier cruisers that lack maneuverability. They are critical in vision control, and that's because they are fast, stealthy, and maneuverable. A well-played destroyer is an absolute menace in all phases of the gameplay, but in the later parts of the battle key, they will be absolutely critical to the victory of your team. And this starts to, you know, chime in right about when there's three or five ships left per team. As a destroyer player, making it to the end game should trump early game capping and being risky with your hit point pool. Meaning, suicide rushes, probably not super useful unless you know you can get away with it without taking significant amounts of damage. This is true of every nation's destroyers, but it's especially important for destroyer hunters like the U.S. Navy's destroyers, which, uh, you know, are most likely to be equipped to go after other destroyers with that high rate of fire. So here we are, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're breaching into this game, uh, about 14 minutes left, and you'll notice one key difference between their team and my team. We've already lost a destroyer. Now we have the advantage in the map position, we have the advantage in terms of points, and what we don't have the advantage of is in destroyers, and that's going to come back to haunt us. Now the destroyer that we lost was uh, Akatsuki, not a... In a tier 9 fight, not exactly the most critical of destroyers, but still important nonetheless. Especially given the fact that Akatsuki was holding off all of their team over at the sea cap. And now that nobody is left to defend the sea cap, effectively, they have full control reign over the right half of the map. That's never a good thing. Uh, so, with that in mind... Let's look at where their destroyers are at. So we have Sims, which is uh, currently in the A cap. And then there is the Friesland, which is, you know, over here as well. And their Friesland is, is visible. And those two are tag teaming off of each other very, very well. So when Sims goes, when Sims becomes visible and starts shooting, pop smoke, uh, then Friesland picks up the slack and starts engaging ships that are within its range. When Sims gets, when the smoke gets done, uh, Friesland then takes over, you know, uh, or when Friesland decides it's time to bail out, then Sims takes over and picks up the slack. They do a very good job of spotting for one another, and I don't think they're in the same division, and I don't know that they consciously did this, but it's an incredibly important st uh, ability for a very well-played destroyer to do. You want to be teaming up with your team and constantly showing your team where the enemy is at. And so the Sims, playing in the A-cap, is exposing basically a huge portion of our fleet. Akizuki, all the way over at the C-cap, is also exposing everything else. And so every time I fire, I get spotted by something. Every time uh, one of my friendly ships gets close to a cap, they get spotted, they get focused. Huge, huge, huge key role there. As for I am Russ, look at how little damage he's taken. When I zoom back out, you'll see just how little damage he's taken. You'll see exactly how useful he has been and hasn't been. Uh, that Bismarck definitely did not enter that engagement with, uh, you know, full health, but was not short on it either. And, well... <laughs> I... He's done a very good job of whittling away at the Bismarck. So we're going to try and, uh, you know, get ourselves into this fight a little bit more. We've, we're have we're up as far as we can go and stay, you know, fully repaired. This Massachusetts bow on. I figured Georgia's guns would be able to do a little bit more damage to this. I'm aiming just a little too far forward, and he's going just slow enough that it's hard for um, hard for those shells to get any damage. But he does end up opening up. 
Now, Akizuki all the way over in the east is, uh, you know, keeping our kid away from his, uh, his ships there. He's spotting. He's doing everything in his power to make... Oh, that was a monster hit. He's doing everything in his power to keep the enemy ships, us in this case, illuminated for his team. So his Missouri, the Zara, the Alaska can all get engaged. Meanwhile, Sims and the Friesland are keeping the Sovetsky Soyuz and Gneisenau completely in, in the loop as far as, you know, where ship locations are. As you can see, I haven't fired and I'm being spotted. Really annoying, especially since I can't spot uh, the Ibuki here. <laughs> and the only thing I think that saved me from massive amounts of pain and damage here is the fact that this island existed. So with that, our, I don't think our destroyers are doing a terrible job of keeping the enemy spotted. There's definitely no shortage of targets for me to engage and shoot at. The Sovetsky Soyuz is over there. Uh, traveling slow and broadside, but uh, you can see there Sims. Sims has decided to go ahead and back out of this. Now watch for the Friesland to pop up. So Sims is no longer spotting the bulk of our team, and you'll start to see the, the Friesland will start to pick up the slack a little bit here and will pop up again. Meanwhile, <laughs> things have gone awry for us. Um... And not in good ways. Ooh, double citadel. There's another monster hit. Uh, things have not gone well. So there's the free slend now uh, getting ready to uh, put himself into position to engage. And here's the free slend picking up the slack from where the Sims left off. And this is why I, I so strongly encourage if you're a destroyer player, do your best to make it to the end game. If you're a U.S. destroyer captain, it's especially important for you to do your best and make sure that you make it all the way to the end of the match. Uh, it's very tempting to go into the cap early on, to rush in there to deal with, uh, you know, enemy destroyers. Don't sacrifice your health un unnecessarily. If you can get in there with the help of a cruiser, awesome. If not, Get out of there. Don't hang around for too long. Don't trade your health unnecessarily, especially if you know that they are supported by cruisers. That's not a good sign. So at this point, the match is effectively over. Uh, I am forced to choose to, uh, you know, pursue the Sims here. The Sims is picked up. The Friesland's disappeared. We talked about that. Ibuki is still completely hidden and still firing and cannot be seen. Um, just unbelievable the amount of just, whether it was intentional or unintentional teamwork going on there, absolute props to the, to this team. So there's, I am Russ, he's just sitting behind the island there, making my life hell. Friesland kind of picked up a little bit. You'll see that, uh, if it wasn't for the Sovetsky Soyuz, I wouldn't be spotted here. And so I stopped being spotted. And... <laughs> Once I get spotted again, things kind of take that turn for the worse there. But uh, as you can see, like we, we lost that vision control game in this one. We lost complete control over the eastern flank almost at the outset, ha not having the destroyers there hold back the enemy for very long is a problem. And I don't know what happened over there. I'm guessing the Akatsuki beached herself. Um, hard to really know. Uh, but just based upon my rewatch of this and where it was at on the minimap, I think she ended up beaching herself in a place where she got spotted by the Missouri's radar. Not a good place to get caught. Uh, definitely hurt our team very early on, especially since she was the only thing keeping the entire eastern flank from just collapsing altogether. Everybody in the middle, um, you know, it seemed like our team kind of pushed forward into the, the sea cap there and then promptly just gave up. Uh, we had absolutely no coverage in the middle towards the end game. And part of that was because everybody in the middle was getting, you know, oh, there goes the Fletcher just got taken out by the, um, or the Sims just got taken out by the Fletcher rather. That's the only DD that they lost this entire match. You can look at how lopsided this battle was in their favor. So this, is, again, this is all my opinion about vision control. I, I really think their destroyers played much better off of each other, played much better with the team. Their team supported them in ways 
Uh, they didn't play super risky with their hit point pool. They hung around until the end of the match and only started taking risks once it was safer for them to start taking risks. That definitely changed the balance of this. Our Destroyers, they played it safe. You know, two of them made it to the very end, but uh, by the same token, they also didn't do any real spotting. And so it was hard for us to do well in this battle. We kind of ended up facing... Uh, <laughs> odds. So you saw where the Ibuki was. He was fifth on their team. Uh, did enough damage there. Can't stress it enough. I think he did a fantastic job. I think their destroyers did a fantastic job, and it definitely won them the game. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. You guys know the drill. Let me know what you think of this video down in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.